So in this segment, we're going to be talking about the EU taking new legal action against the UK over post-Brexit deal changes. Uh, we covered it before when the EU initially took legal action last year and then paused it. Um, the EU are now taking new legal action because the UK have made four kind of huge changes to the way the Northern Ireland Protocol is going to work, or at least we're in the process of doing it. It's still kind of in first draft legislation. It's got a long way to go before it's passed as a bill, if it is passed in the end. Um, so the EU has announced new legal action against the UK over its plans to scrap parts of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Ministers outlined a bill on Monday aimed at unilaterally changing trade, tax and governance arrangements in the 2020 deal. The treaty was agreed by both sides, but um, the UK aren't happy, so we get to change things because that's the way the world works, right? The world revolves around us, or so I'm told. The sun never sets on the British Empire. The EU says overriding parts of the deal would break international law, which is not a hard one to figure out. It would be breaking the agreement that we had formerly. Um, the European Commission, Sefcovic, who I feel sorry for some days because he's got to deal with Liz Truss, um, said there was no legal or political justification uh, whatsoever for unilaterally changing an international agreement. He said, let's call a spade a spade, which is, I don't know how often they use it in the rest of the union, but um, uh, people in England do use that saying, let's call a spade a spade. Or is it an American saying? And that the UK's decision left us with no choice but to take legal action. And to be fair, I think the EU and every have every right to take legal action over us. Um, they shouldn't have unpaused it last year. That's that you know, in my opinion, they shouldn't have unpaused it. The Northern Ireland Protocol is a special arrangement, which the Northern Ireland Protocol is in itself a compromise from both sides. And there aren't many agreements like it in the world. Let's be honest here. Um, there's a reason for that you know it's very complicated but the history in northern ireland and the republic of ireland um that island is very uh complicated and there's a reason why that agreement had to had to happen avoiding a hard border with the republic of ireland because you can't have a hard border in the island of ireland because that violates the good friday agreement which um you know we don't want to go back to what we saw uh during the um the late 90s so not the late 90s the uh late last century the arrangement ensured free trade could continue across the Irish land border, which is a sensitive issue because of the history of conflict in Northern Ireland. Um, the majority of politicians elected in Northern Ireland Assembly last month support the protocol as well. So, you know, the UK government are going against so many different things here with their own manifesto, which promised the Northern Ireland protocol. So they're going against their own mandate and the mandate of the majority of MLAs in Stormont. The European Commission said it would restart legal action paused in March, but obviously they have more stuff to add to that now. Um, I don't know if they'll have time to get this thing to court soon because the courts do generally go on recess over the summer. Um, so the usual person I ask is, is um, away at the moment, so I'm not sure um, what, how fast this thing will go to court and how fast we'll get a ruling on it. Uh, this was over the UK's decision to lay checks on certain goods. Um, Lord Frost last year effectively with the unilateral uh, changes. The Commission also launched two new proceedings over claims the UK has failed in its obligations to share trade data and set up border inspection posts. So, again, the UK was meant to share trade data. We haven't done so for 18 months. And that's another thing where the EU could have taken us to court over but didn't. We didn't set up the border inspection posts like we were meant to as well. And having more border inspection posts, having more staff would have made the, chest let the checks take less time and be less onerous because you have more staff dealing with them. And obviously sharing the data means there'd be less checks potentially as well because the EU can see what's passing, uh, what's staying in Northern Ireland and what isn't. These steps could eventually lead to the UK being fined under a dispute process seen over by the European Court of Justice. Um, that's going to be interesting as well because the protocol legislation gets rid of the European Court of Justice in ruling in disputes with the Northern Ireland Protocol. So it'd be interesting if the UK just tries to ignore the ruling by the European Court for Justice. That would be, um, that that's something I think could happen. So that's one worth, um, you know, watching out for and subscribing for if you want to do that. Um, if the UK just says, nah, mate, we don't, you have no jurisdiction here. Um, and obviously, if we're if the country is being fined, I don't think that's fair either because at the end of the day, it's these politicians that should be fined. They're the ones making this decision. I know that sets a bad precedent in some ways, but I think that these politicians, the ones that have broken the protocol or have seen to have broken the protocol, should be the ones sanctioned, not the taxpayer. Liz Truss said a reasonable and practical solution to the problems facing um, the problems facing in the problems people are facing in Northern Ireland. Um, you know, that's what the government are claiming they're doing, but we know that's fundamentally untrue. 
um, and the UK can only make progress through negotiations if the EU are willing to change the protocol itself. So essentially what she's saying is the EU have to renegotiate the protocol, which the, EU's, the EU commission starts on this, which they get the their um, their mandate from, you know, the heads of state for different EU countries, all the EU countries, is that the protocol will not be renegotiated. The issue could come up when Boris Johnson appears in front of PMQs. It actually didn't, um, which was surprising to me found that very surprising um there's nothing more in this article i don't think they've added anything more since i ran through it this morning we'll have a quick check i should have refreshed it before i started the video um but i don't think fundamentally have they added anything um oh they have added some analysis here the launch of legal action by the eu might sound dramatic but this process it will stretch over many months uk legislation to scrap parts of the protocol will likewise take, take some time and it will be it will face amendments it looks like mps will back it but the house of lords can delay it um, the stakes have been raised uh, this week in a dispute that's been bogged down for months. Worth noting is the emphasis from the European Commission um, that his door is open. He's saying the EU want to talk. However, the fact remains that the two sides, two sides can't even quite agree on what they should talk about. I think they should really be talking about the express lane or the green lane. I think that's the one where they can actually make the most uh, headway. Uh, with taxation, the dual regulation stuff, that's all. that's never going to happen. The mood isn't optimistic with diplomats frequently suggesting they think the issue is mired in Tory party politics and those uh, diplomats would be right. And if nothing changes, the slow burn passage of legal action and the legislation could effectually, eventually explode into an even bigger confrontation. But as officials are keen to stress, we're not there yet and that's important. Um, you know, these are the infringements that the UK is um, alleged to have done. In March, the EU launched legal action um, against the UK for alleged breach of the protocol. The infringement proceedings were paused last year um, as talks were still ongoing. And I think they kind of waited a bit longer to see what the UK would do next. If the government does not reply within two months, the UK, the EU could take the matter to the ECJ, which has the power to impose penalties. Um, the EU has also launched two new actions for further breaches of the protocol. They relate to the um, the UK's failure to carry out its uh, SPS rules, SPS checks, and provide the EU with certain statistics data. That's stuff we've gone through. Um, so yeah, possible solutions, which we'll have a quick get, uh, gander through this. Sorry, it's not my most organised video. The EU also gave more details on its proposals to ease checks. So this would have been the stuff they spoke about in October. These includes an expanded trusted trader arrangement covering more products and more companies and a cut to customs administration. So even now they're still going further than their October proposals, which I don't think that's the wisest idea doing it now because the UK will see it as that our bullying has achieved something. Sefcovich said the proposals were all about simplification and at the news conference attempted to demonstrate by holding up three documents. These are the three pages that need to be filled, uh, not 300, uh, not 30, not three. He said, I mean, that's phenomenal. That is genuinely, that's what, um, that's what people, I think businesses in Northern Ireland want, just a simplification of the whole process. That, you know, when you had Connor Burns going up there with a stack of paper, um, if those goods are now staying in Northern Ireland, it's going to be three bits of paper. The UK has previously rejected the EU's proposals, saying they would make things worse than they are now. How is it that a proposal that changes things to three pieces of paper can make things worse than they are now? Riddle me that. Um, you know, it's honestly, this is good stuff here from the Commission, um, from Sefcovic specifically. And, you know, the people who come up with this stuff, they deserve a lot of credit. Um, but, you know, I don't know where we go from here. And I would be very wary if I were in the EU of, you know, listening to the bullies in the British government because they will see that as their bullying has done that, you know, gotten them somewhere. But um, sorry, this wasn't my most organised video. I didn't expect them to um, suddenly add more to this article, which I really should have done. But, um, you know, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. The key points are the UK, the EU is continuing to take legal action and is still offering to make further changes to the October proposals. So I guess we'll call these the June proposals. Like the video, comment, share, subscribe, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.